there we go <laughs> fantastic so thanks for all of you for joining and i'm going to introduce you to pete um so i'm going to let pete introduce himself and then we're going to go in to our conversation and our debate pete go for it thank you raquel listen it's lovely to see everybody thanks for having me um my name's pete morris um i work with my clients on making them well trying to make them better leaders better communicators that can be through coaching consulting speaking at conferences absolutely anything um i think there'll be some people who are watching this who might have seen me uh, as a host or facilitator at conferences that's something also that i massively enjoyed doing my day-to-day -day focus though it is really on the coaching and consulting side of communication and leadership i work across a pretty broad range of clients um, retail media banking medical ophthalmology charity which i love because it keeps things pretty varied um, i am a big believer in keeping things unbelievably simple i am quite a simple person when i first started out in business i couldn't fathom why everybody kept trying to make everything so complicated all the time so totally naively i used to try and simplify everything which at times got me into a, a whole heap of trouble but more recently i have realized it is it is absolutely the only way to live so i try and keep things as easy as it can be i'm hoping that the next 42 minutes uh, are also going to be as easy as they can possibly be. But uh, from what Raquel's just said, I think I'm in for a bit of a bumpy ride. So let's see how we get on, ladies and gentlemen. But it's a pleasure to be with you. Hope you enjoy what we're going to talk about for the next three quarters of an hour. Pete, amazing. So, so everyone can have like a bit of an insight. We've obviously been on this journey with our Use These Better In. We've changed topics and we've listened to what people have wanted. And um, Pete kind of blew me away. We met a few weeks ago and we talked about different subjects. And the first subject that we've, I want to talk about, and I love Pete's opinion on this, is hybrid working. Now, I've invited some of our senior management team onto this call, and I can see faces um, on our call at the moment of the trials and tribulations around hybrid working and the commitment around that. And also, difficulties in hybrid working and Pete kind of you discussed with me a lot of your opinions didn't you of how you feel that businesses and leaders need to approach that and the impact of that on day-to-day -day business so mm. do you want to kind of talk me through a little bit more about that and give the guys a bit of an insight yeah I mean look it's it's a it's a crazy time like that we're in here and yeah. And the big problem that we've got at the moment is that is that nobody actually really knows what the rules are and 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 that that's the problem you know we're all kind of sitting around going oh you know this hybrid working thing i mean i had at the start of the year when it first started to get mentioned i had clients coming to me going what what's this hybrid working thing then and i was kind of going i i haven't got a clue i don't know i don't know what it is because none of us none of us really know what it is and i think you can kind of see that from the way that some bigger businesses and bigger brands have kind of dealt with it. So we had a situation um, kind of sort of middle of the summer where you had Goldman Sachs, and I'm not calling Goldman Sachs out, I'm just using them as an example. If anybody's on from Goldman Sachs, I'm really sorry. Uh, <laughs> but they, they basically came out and said, well, we are gonna ask from September, we're gonna ask everybody to come back to the office five days a week. And there were two reasons that they said they wanted to do that. The first reason was they said it will massively improve our culture. Fair play, right? That's a really good point. It will massively improve your culture. And the second reason was because we are an office based organization, which is a utterly bizarre thing to come out with. It's like saying, I'm going outside because the sky is blue. Well, you, of course you're an office based organization. You're Goldman Sachs, we kind of know that. In response to that, you then had a lot of the big retail brands and some of the kind of Silicon Valley companies saying, well, we're going to open our office. And if you want to come and work in our office and be with your colleagues, that's great. We'd love that. But if you'd rather stay home, we will find ways to make the culture work for you. 
Now, neither of these things are right, neither of these things are wrong. And that's the problem at the moment, because it's the uncertainty thing that we can't quite get our head around. And I think the problem that we're finding at the moment as leaders and communicators is we want to we want to get the right answer to this. We want to get the right solution to this. In three months time, the solution that we've dreamt up today won't be relevant. In a year's time, the solution that we've dreamt up today will be even less relevant. So there isn't a right, there's only a now. And I think that, you know, we have to also think about the reasons that we were actually going into the office in the first place. And I think that's the problem that we have at the moment because we kind of, we kind of do it, or we were doing it pre-March 2020, we were doing it because we did it. We, we didn't really know why we did it. There's a whole ton of great reasons to go into the office and be with your colleagues, right? Loads. Yeah. But we need to work out what they are before we can actually get even close to working out what hybrid working looks like. So you think it's kind of, and we spoke about this previously, it's more an understanding of your team. And um, this is something that I, I find myself constantly saying, and I have done for the last few weeks is one size doesn't fit all no. what works for one organization or works for one team wouldn't necessarily work for another and i guess it's up to our leaders to decide what works best do you think p or yeah it's about communication isn't it and i guess it hybrid working has a huge impact on how you communicate as a business so how do you approach that when you work with clients that are struggling with hybrid working? How do you educate them on being better communicators? Is that kind of what the goal is? I think that you, 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 you know, when this all started, right, sort of spring of last year, I heard somebody call it uh, not only obviously a massive, you know, sort of big, you know, global health issue, somebody called it this is going to be the greatest leadership challenge that people in business have ever faced, uh, which I, I still believe that's the case now, because even though we've been at most businesses have been able to pivot to be functional and survive and do what they need to do in this way. Most businesses have been able to do that, but we're still working through it. We still don't really know. And yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, the communication part is massively important. I mean, you know, it's about us as leaders and communicators really getting to know what works for our people. You know, we were talking uh, last week when we were kind of doing a tiny little bit of prep for this. And you said about, you know, how, you know, your organization has really tried to kind of do that thing of reaching out, making sure everybody's OK. You know, having kind of like sort of, you know, we saw those sort of like on, you know, virtual Christmas parties being prepared a year ago. People doing yeah. like cook along sessions right now. That's awesome because it means that we're making the effort to reach out and try and, and, and touch our people in some way. But you've also got some people that are massive introverts who don't want to do that. And they find that excruciatingly difficult. So that's when the communication bit starts to really kick in, because you have to be able to talk to people in a way that they are going to understand why it's important that the culture exists in the organisation. And I think that, you know, it is hard to try and sort of get across everybody, but it is a big, big leadership challenge that, you know, yeah, we, we, we have to just talk to more people. And, you know, somebody said something to me about, you know, a few months ago, I think that we think sometimes that when we are communicating as leaders or as managers, it's all about big, bold, important moment situations. It's about the monthly update. It's about the town hall. It's about here's our new strategy. Not knocking those things, hugely important for any, any organization. What is import as important now is what I think is called micro communication, which is where you do those little things where if you haven't heard from anybody or you haven't seen anybody in your organization for a week, 10 days, you pick the phone up and you ask them if they're all right. 
you say, yeah. are, are you okay? You kind of, we, I did a call, I, you know, I didn't see you. And the problem is, is that we're all so busy worrying about the stuff and the results. Sometimes it's really easy to forget that when we're talking about communication at the moment, we are talking about human connection. And you, your thing that you just said there, Raquel, one size doesn't fit all. My God, that is that is so, so true. So yeah. it's about leaders trying to work out what does work for different people and kind of applying and bending the rules accordingly. Yeah. And I think I agree with what, you, what you're saying 100%. You've got my back in. I've bought into it. And when we've spoken to other people during our open discussion webinars, and it doesn't matter if it's been Nuri at MACE or it has been Chris at ISG, who are mm. leaders within their business, granted huge consultancy practice, global construction firm, monsters size-wise. But the theme that has gone all the way through, adding the EY, it's about communication if that's in person if that's on a zoom call if that's a telephone call a whatsapp a message an inbox on facebook or instagram it's about touching people and we also spoke about especially during the pandemic our working i mean i'm working from home which is really really lovely for me so i was able to get up and start my day very relaxed i didn't have road rage on the way into the office i didn't have to fight and wrestle for a car parking space so I'm smiling today. Yesterday, going into the office, it was quite a hellish journey. Got missed my junction on the way home, came home in a little bit of a hump. I'm probably more productive when I'm in this environment than any other environment at all. And I love that. I love seeing clients. I love giving them a cuddle. And I love meeting them for coffee and going for a big brief or a meeting. And I think it's fantastic. You have the pros of hybrid working because there's that engagement isn't there that we've spoken mm. about but then you have huge cons like you've just said if you've got someone that's an introvert that doesn't feel comfortable on camera that doesn't necessarily maybe know how to use the technology so you have fall downs and we spoke about how many meetings do people mm. think that they've had more meetings during covid than ever before and this is what we spoke about earlier wasn't it that and I loved your idea of it and your feelings of online meetings and communication versus face to face. Mm. What are the pros and cons, Pete? Listen, right. What's happened is we've all gone from being uh, I, this is the, the, the metaphor that I kind of use for this is pre COVID. Our lives, our work lives were on stage, right? We were all on stage. We were the kind of lead actors in our work lives. And there was a hundred different things going on at any moment, right? And we were involved in that show. We were the lead actor or actress in it. Sometimes we didn't really like it. Sometimes we loved it, but it was a great place to be. So March 2020, everybody's gone, take that show, put it on TV, right? That's what we're all doing now, right? We're all on TV. At this moment, we're on TV with each other. Right now, because we're on TV, there is way less behavioral cues and clues that we all have access to. So and it's way harder to be engaged this way. So back to your point on more meetings. I don't know what everybody who's watching this feels. I know that I have way more meetings now than I did before March of 2020. Now, the reason I have that is because I'm not in a building all the time. I don't have the coffee machine conversation. I don't get the water cooler conversation. I'm not in the office kitchen. I'm not doing that moment where I get to go, ah, oh, Raquel, I'm really glad that I bumped into you. That project that we're working on, can we just have 10 minutes on that just while we're making a cup of tea? That's now an official meeting. Yeah. So our diaries are now absolutely laden down with meetings. So then we start thinking about meetings and most of us, and I would include myself in this up until about eight months ago, most of us have completely forgotten why we have meetings. There are only three reasons to have a meeting, right? One is to create something. 
to actually sit down and design something, innovate. Our client has a problem. How do we solve it? So to create something. Number two is to decide on something. So actually make a decision. We're having this meeting because we need to make a decision, a decision on X. And the third reason that we would have a meeting is to just be together. Right? It is OK to call a meeting to be together. Now, the one that isn't in the three reasons to have a meeting, you probably notice, is updates, right? And most of our meetings, I worked out about a month ago that I was having about a day a week of update meetings. Now, those meetings can be done. The information that I'm getting in those meetings, I can get that on an email. I can get it in a phone call. But because we've kind of lost our way on why we're having meetings, we go, let's have a weekly update, right? Now, I get that. I get why you do that. Let's get everybody together, see everybody on screen. I understand that. You don't need to do the update while you're doing the being together bit, right? So we, we've completely fogged up in terms of the reasons for having meetings. And that is driving quite a damaging culture because I've got a client who works in the finance industry who tells me that he does, on average, 16 meetings a day. Yeah, now, mega. We, we can't be doing that. You can't be having 16 meetings a day. What are the quality of those conversations going to be like? So we have to find a way to really rethink this. Now, getting everybody together in an office building saying, hopefully things are going to get a little bit safer as we get out of winter, or we go into the spring, fingers crossed. It is all right to say, let's have, let's have a day in the office together where we can work together and be together. That's absolutely what we should be doing. We're, we're human animals. We crave social interaction. We want human connection. But we do have to think really carefully about the rules of why we're doing this, because it is driving that behavior that is meaning we, we're completely exhausted. And by the way, this is way more exhausting than it is being in a room with the people that we know and like and love and want to work with every day. Yeah, it definitely is. And I think something you just said there Pete communication needs to be communicated and understood you oh, can't just yeah. shoot from the hip and think well because we're having zoom calls and because we're going into the office or because we're having group calls or we've got a group whatsapp that's not necessarily communicating in the best or the most efficient way for a business no it's, it, got, it, it's got to be right for the people i'm guessing the subject that you're covering and your end goal, maybe? Yeah, completely, absolutely. It's about whoever is responsible for that meeting saying right at the start of the meeting, this is what we're doing here, right? An agenda. Easy, easy. I sometimes think that even you don't need an agenda, you need a why, you need a reason, right? It's about the individual saying, we're all here today because we need to design X. We're all here today to decide on Y. We're all here today because we're going to be together. We haven't seen each other properly for a couple of weeks. I want to know how everybody's doing. You know, there's there's, there's a, a, a good, good mate of mine. I was best man at his wedding. Um, you know, he, he's worked for an organization for eight years where they have been remote from each other. So he, he lives and works in London. It's a, a design agency. And there's other people that he works with. They work in Berlin, New York, whatever. So he's he's never been like part of a, of, of a team that got together in the office, you know, a couple of times a week. So when this all began, I was talking to him about this last summer. And I said, you know, we've got to be really careful because culture's being affected and, you know, people's kind of mental health's being affected. And he said to me, oh, he said, I don't know what the problems are about. Why is everybody getting so worked up about it and I said look I said you, you know you can't you can't say that this is a real real problem and he said well we're fine with it you know I've worked this way for eight now nine years we have a great culture you know we understand exactly why we all come together and I said to him okay what well, how does that happen and he said well we have a weekly call and I said well everybody has a weekly call I have a weekly call I said you, you can't tell me that by by having a weekly call where you run through a few updates 
that that solves your culture, it's, really, it's, it's not really an update call. He said, we kind of use it to be together. So they have a weekly call where they come together. They give out thanks to each other for someone who's done some amazing work that week. Somebody says, I've got a little bit of a challenging situation with a client or a customer. Can anybody help? Goes on for about half an hour. And they're very clear on why they're doing it. You know, yeah. there's no, oh, well, I've got everybody. Can I just update you? on? So there's none of that. It's all about this is us being together because we physically can't be. Only one or two times a year are we able to get together. So you have to be very clear around why you're doing this stuff. Otherwise, we end up like my finance guy who's doing 16 meetings a week and he doesn't even know why. Yeah, and this is what happens, doesn't it? And I think definitely from a business's perspective, whilst mm. all your, your team are having meetings about meetings and we're going to sit down and we're going to discuss X, Y and Z, and then you come away and I come away from some meetings and think, well, oh, was I the only one that didn't get what we just discussed? Mm. And you kind of be, get left there and you think, crikey, we didn't make a plan and there isn't a next step and, and you struggle with it sometimes. And me and you spoke about that a couple of weeks ago where I can't be the only one, maybe I am, but I doubt it that walks away without an agenda. And you touched upon something that's something that's very, very close to my heart. And I know for a lot of businesses, and there's a lot of different businesses on this call today, we mentioned culture. Mm. I personally think, and I know kind of we've spoken about this very, very briefly about the culture change, chucking in a sprinkle of generational changes that's happened over the last two years, 18 months, two years. And our communication changing has changed our culture, hasn't it? Massively. Without us even realising, I guess. Yeah, massively. I mean, you know, you, you, everything. It is a huge, huge uh, cliche, Raquel, you know, where people go, well, everything you do is communication. And we all sit there and go, Christ, not this again. But it is true, right? I know it's a cliche, but it is true, right? Every single thing that you do is communication. I'll give you an example, which which completely links to culture. Now, you could call this culture. I, I would call it communication. Very often, you see companies who have what I will call toxic high performers, right? So the type of people who are absolutely brilliant at their jobs, they're amazing at getting results. They hit their numbers. Without them, the business probably wouldn't perform as well, but they're just not very good for the morale, motivation, and overall feel, culture, if you like, of the organization. Basically, a dickhead, right? If you promote a dickhead, right, you are basically saying to the rest of the company, we don't really care how you behave as long as you hit your numbers as long as you hit your kpis you'll yeah. be all right okay that is dangerous and that's communication by yeah. doing that you're communicating to people how it's okay to behave but if you say listen honesty integrity and culture are really important here in fact, they're actually just as important as you hitting your numbers and hitting your metrics. And we probably won't promote you until we're actually seeing you displaying honesty and integrity and the right culture. Everybody in the organization knows that that behavior is important. And we've clearly communicated that. So you can argue that that's culture. You can also argue that that is communication. Yeah. And I think that you know, I said about micro behaviors, right? That's where that stuff, that's where the magic lies in terms of getting the culture that you want. You know, it's about if you're a senior leader in a business, if you're back in the office, you see someone in the hallway, you stop and ask them how their project's going. You stop and ask them how their house move went the other week. You stop them and you say, oh, I hear you went to that new restaurant the other week in town. How was it? I'm going to be going. It's that. It's those sort of things that we do. It's the little and often stuff that we do that drives the culture. And you are communicating a culture in everything that you do. And one final point, that's not just the leadership thing, by the way. 
that's yeah. absolutely everybody of course it's on leaders to drive it it's it's on all of us to be part of it yeah of course it is and it's a journey isn't it we talk about from our perspective as a business we talk about our culture and what's important to our leaders and what message comes down to us yeah. as the the worker bees the honeybees whatever you want to call us and i think culture is a massive thing and i touched upon it we fell into the pit of this area that leads on to, from communication it leads on from culture and it's that leadership responsibility in great leadership responsibility and leading from the front and driving your team forward leads on to culture and i've got these in huge capital letters by the way on my notepad in front of me leads on to a positive culture that we spoke about but then what does it give to the end user your employees the people that are out there fighting fires your team players that within a bid environment that are eating a cold takeaway at three o'clock on a sunday morning when they should have been at home and they've walked away from their their family or their friends or their plans at the weekend you mm. get an emotional investment don't you you get an emotional investment you are all even in that moment when you're eating the the the, the cold 3 a.m curry right <laughs> yeah even in that moment you are together with the people who work in the organization with you behind the purpose that you create right you all believe the same thing look do, do we want to do that do we want to be sitting there at 3 a.m in the morning eating a cold curry no do we do, do we want to work really long hours start really early finish re really late not see our family so much of course we don't do we want to go traveling and be working pre-covid in a sort of hotel away from home leave on a monday come back on a friday of course we don't why do we do it we do it we should do it because it feels worth it it feels worth it because everybody who is in the organization believes what i believe we're united behind a purpose. We all believe the same thing. You know, very often I'm working with a, a client at the moment who has inherited a group of people uh, in his organization that are unhappy. They've been badly led. He's come in and the first thing he said to me, he said, I need to make them happy. And I said, for God's sake, don't do that. I said, that's the last thing you want to do. And he said, well, but they're really unhappy. And I said, you can't make them happy. Happy, this is the problem, right? Happiness is something that we all love. We will yeah. all get it. It's fleeting, right? Happiness is your football team wins on a Saturday afternoon. You have a great night out with your mates. You go to an amazing concert. You go to an amazing theatre show. You come out, you feel happy, right? You get to see your family, your friends. But it's, it's a puff of smoke. It, it, it's there and it's gone. We all want it and we all love it and we should all have it. What we're looking for out of work is we're looking for fulfillment. We're, we're looking for joy. We're looking for that moment where when the alarm goes off at 5 a.m. and we've got to travel somewhere to see a client and we wake up and we think, Jesus Christ, it's five in the morning. Yeah. The next thought in our brain needs to be, but I do this because it feels worth it. And everybody else who I work with, everybody in my team, everybody in my company, my leader, feels the same way so i do it because we all believe the same thing and you know that you know you said culture you you can't you know we're back to the old cliche again you know but you can't not communicate your culture because people i think people confuse values and culture which i think is a, a common mistake to make the values are the words on a wall the values that says this is what we believe the culture is the behavior and the behavior is the communication. It's how we do that stuff with each other. So, you know, it, when people, I think, you know, talk about we need to improve our communication at work, sometimes I think that gets interpreted as we need to send out more emails. We, yeah. need, to have, we need to have more meetings. We need to have more. Let's do a town hall on Friday, right? It's that. Sometimes it isn't that. Sometimes it's, we need to improve our behavior. We need to improve how we talk to people when we talk to them. That's what we're talking about. And it's, if we nail that, that's the future. 
of communication. That's how we get out of this thing that we don't know at the moment, hybrid working, virtual working, whatever. If we focus on that, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll adapt. Look, we're so adaptable, right? I know that everybody's a bit, oh, you know, it's tough at the moment. It is really tough at the moment. And, and you know, like COVID, it's been awful. Mm. But this isn't new. You know, we've had these moments before. What, what, did, you, what did you think the internet did? Yeah. And it completely changed the way that we, what do you think World War II did? What did the Industrial Revolution do? Right, it's the same thing. We, we can adapt. We can do it. We just have to focus. If we focus on each other, we'll be all right. We'll be absolutely fine. We'll nail this. The future will yeah. be amazing. I think this is the thing, isn't it? And I think, um, we and I talk to my peers about how when COVID hit, I think for the first six months, and I probably speak for most people on this call, and forgive me if I'm not talking about, because we're from a mix and an eclectic bunch of areas and industries and sectors but as human beings we fought fire didn't we because we didn't know if our colleagues were going to be furloughed we had no i mean i was naive and we can't close down the country for longer than three weeks it'll be fine everything's gonna come back hey ho we're still under that pressure and that the, the restrictions that, that were in there two years ago and we're all at different stages depends on region location city country scotland we've got people on here from scotland that are a little bit behind us when it comes on restrictions and tighter um restrictions so pete here's the here's a question i'm going to put to you and it's not prepared mm. so apologies but i just go for it. About it you know what I'm go like. for it. we've got people sat on this call that mm. manage and lead teams we said about culture being a massive thing and communication being the probably the number one thing the driving force behind, by the way, not any culture changes, but productivity, increased jobs being done, better work being done, a happier workforce. How do we do it? How do they even start in their business by making that change and leading from the front, so to speak? How do they go about it? How would you tackle it? I think you have to, you know, I mentioned the purpose, I mentioned the the why, if you like, it, it, it's got to start there, right? We, we look at these companies, we look at Apple, Netflix, you know, the examples, the Google, the examples that always get used. And we do that thing where we sort of go, oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind a bit of that. I wouldn't mind working there. You know, I did it the other, the other week I was up in London. I walked past Google's offices uh, right next to King's Cross Station and I stopped and sort of went, oh, I wonder what they're doing in there. I wouldn't mind being in there. Right. Yeah. Now, all they're doing, all they're doing is they're making the why really, really simple. Right. Apple's whole why. They just believe in making technology really easy to use, whether you're seven or whether you're 77. And everything that they do aims towards that. So every behavior that they have in that organization is linked towards that. I think what we do is we have to go right back to the start, right? What is the point in your company existing? Now, here's the really tough part. The why that you come up with as the leader or leaders or the people of the company, whoever decides on what it is, you have to understand you might never achieve it. And that's where it all goes wrong. But it's not about achieving it. It's about trying. You know, I work with a lot of companies, Raquel, who, right, so I was working with um, a big insurance company earlier this year. And I said, what's the whole like purpose of the company? What's the sort of why? Why do you do this? Well, we want to be the biggest insurance company in the world by 2025. That's, that's, not, that's not a purpose. That's not a why. That's a result. Right? And that's what we get wrong. And there's a big difference, isn't there? Huge difference. If you become the biggest insurance company in the world by 2025 because you were looking to achieve your purpose, congratulations. I'm absolutely delighted for you. 
but it doesn't mean anything. It's absolutely meaningless. Yeah. People think, I think that there's still, I think this, I think, by the way, I think we're making great strides and we're getting way better at this, which is brilliant news. If you believe that you go to work and you have a company, you are a leader, and if you think that you can go looking for a pot of gold that is at the end of the rainbow uh, by yourself and for yourself, you're, you're going to get disappointed. The, the, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow should be, look, I'm not even sure whether there is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, but I'd really like to try and find it. And I want to take as many people on the journey with me. You might never do it. Look, I spend all of my time trying to make people communicate better and leaders lead better and generally make people more fulfilled at work. I know I will never, ever, ever achieve that. I'll never, I'm, I'm, when I'm lying there on the final day on this planet, I won't go, brilliant, I got everybody. I'll be laying there thinking I was absolutely nowhere near it. But that's not the point. The point is, it's, it's about taking a step towards doing that. It's about the future. It's about stuff that we don't know. It's, a, it's about those things. It's not about a metric or a result. And by the way, I'm not knocking metrics or results because they're massively important in any business. They show us how fast we've gone and they show us how far we've come and they show us where we are. But every single metric that we achieve has to be seen as a step towards the greater purpose. And that's what it's about. It's about businesses going right back to that. And look, the businesses that are doing well or better during the last 21 months, they're the businesses that are probably spending a bit more time on that. Yeah, rather than the bottom line. Yeah, because if you have all of that other stuff, the bottom line takes care of itself. The results get done. What do you think happens if you've got a completely fulfilled team of people who are all in line with your purpose, all want to be on the bus? What's the result going to be like? Yeah, brilliant, never. brilliant, yeah. right? You never have to think about it. So it's about focusing on that rather than, oh, what's kind of what's what what's next? Well, we got it next month. Oh, we get it the month after that. I get that. I get those things need to be discussed in business. We must do that. But that isn't the thing. That's a tiny little thing. The, the, the success of a post-COVID organisation is the bigger picture. Yeah, and do you know what? I, um, I agree. And to put some meat on the bone and RMDs on this call, I went to one of our businesses yesterday. Um, not our head office before someone starts punching the sky. I went to one of our businesses, and I'm not going to name them on the call. And I'll tell you what, I was blown away, Pete, uh, because we're a national um, business, but we're local. Right. So we have lots of different businesses. And because of the size of us and the, the, the style of our beast, so to speak, is it's managed by different managers. Every mm -hmm. single branch is different. Every, every time I walk into a branch, I always think, crikey, there's a different take on our branding and who we are. If you can hear my dog growling, she's just got a bone and she's rolling around in the living room on it. Apologies. Um, so it happens, mate. It's live. Um, so we went into I went into this branch, and you know, Pete, everyone wanted to be there. Everyone was communicating. Um, everyone looked really genuinely happy, by the way. <laughs> Not false mm. smiles, like, mm -hmm, thanks for coming. But it was big, genuine smiles that they wanted to be there. And it had this vibe about it, this thing that I mean, I, I'm part of the team and I wanted to be there, but there was a couple of clients as we walked out, they wanted to be there. They looked dead chilled. They were like sat on this coffee bar and enjoying the whole experience. It blew me away. And I think the big thing that I'm getting to here, Pete, is the fact that being a global business, being a business that covers Europe, even being a national business or a local business, the hmm. values have to remain the same, doesn't it? So even if you're a team leader or a bid manager or a regional director, the ethics are still the same, are they not? Of course they are. 100%. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you don't have to all be 
kind of, you know, like I, I've, I've had this conversation with, with a couple of different organizations and, and a few people have completely fair enough, by the way, because I get it. They've said to me, Pete, you, you, you're a bit of an idealist, mate. Do you know what I mean? It's not it's not really that practical. Fine. I understand that. And I've also had people say, yeah, but but the, the, the problem is, is the leaders, they're not visionaries. We, you, you don't you don't have to be a visionary in order to have a, a purpose that kind of brings people together. There's probably about less than two percent of, of global leaders you would describe as vision. Steve Jobs was a visionary. You know, Richard Branson was a visionary. Elon Musk was a visionary, right? I would argue that the current, the current. I don't want to bring politics into it because I've only got three minutes left. I would argue that the current Prime Minister of New Zealand is a visionary, right? These people, you don't have to be like that. You just have to decide what your purpose is. You have to decide what your cause is. You have to be able to clearly say it. And you have to make sure that people want to believe it and they want to follow you. And by the way, if people don't want to follow you or people don't believe what you believe, then it's just not a match. It's OK. You know, you're trying to find a group of like minded people that can move forward together. You're, the story that you just told where you were yesterday, everybody, even though you would have had a myriad of different personalities in that room, I can promise you one thing everyone felt the same yeah i agree doesn't, doesn't matter who you are everyone felt the same that's the point we all want to feel the same and we don't have to be like you know barack obama in order to be able to drive that feeling we just need to be able to know what our purpose is and make our people feel part of it and communicating that that's the that's the gold stuff. That's that's yeah. the special source right there. Of course it is. And I think that's the the big driving force behind anything, isn't it? And it's about that yeah. feeling of belonging, being together, and knowing where you're going mm. is a big is a big thing. Um it's, it's... and it's important. Um Pete, every time I talk to you, you kind of blow me away a little bit and it makes me just oh. think. Let's go and take over the world and change things. <laughs> yeah, don't, for God's sake, tell my wife that. If I no. said to her, I'm going to take over the world, let me tell you, she'd find a different planet. Yeah, well, listen, that's that's what we do. That's what we do. We always come up against it and chuck um, haphazard ideas out there. Um, but, I, but I agree with you. I agree with everything that you're saying. I think businesses and individuals have to be accepting of the fact that our, the ways that, in which we communicate and how we do it has huge impact on not only our workload and our work results, but also how individuals feel in themselves. Oh yeah. That's a massive thing. And again, it comes huge. back to it. And as cheesy as this is, it's one shoe doesn't fit all. And I guess as a team leader, a manager, pushing anything forward, a director, an MD, a CEO, whatever your driving force is, you've got to be accepting of that. You've also got to be aware that everyone's different. Yeah, absolutely. So words to live by, aren't they? Of course, you know. Look, it's it's it. Listen, you know, communication, leadership, literally the two hardest things that that you will ever do, ever do. But the most rewarding if you get them right. Yeah, which is fantastic. Thank you, Pete. My absolute um, pleasure. We have got. We've left kind of ten minutes for a Q and A. Now it's going to be quite an open chat so if anyone has anything that they would like to say or put towards us or ask feel free to either raise a hand shout up or drop into our comments box um or if you're a little bit shy we can collect them afterwards yeah and listen if anybody wants to kind of like like hit me up on linkedin and ask anything like outside of this forum if you want to kind of have a bit of a chat about any of this stuff just just do it i'll always reply yeah. And by the way, it's worth to shout out that Pete actually does this. This is his business is to go in and speak to people and have an understanding and offer support and help um, for those businesses and those teams that are struggling um, and, and maybe just need a bit of a morale boost. So, again, if you're sat there and thinking this could be worthwhile, go to Pete, get in touch with him, get him booked in and uh, see what he can do. Thank you, um, Raquel. 
You're welcome. No worries. Um, oh, here we go. So we have got a question. So, Pete, do you feel the decision making process is being extended because every decision needs a meeting? Great question, by the way. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, there's there's this word that has crept in to our vocabulary over the last few months. The word is alignment. You know, I need to go and seek alignment. It literally is now. The next time I hear someone say it, I am going to. Yeah, yeah, I need to go and get alignment on that. Let me guarantee I tell you what's happened there. Right. And by the way, I think it's completely understandable and I'm not knocking anybody for being a little bit indecisive. OK. We've we've kind of mentally changed during this last 21 month period. I, I've noticed it when I've been talking to businesses about them doing work with with me and with my company. So you had this period last year where everybody was like, right, hunker down. Right hunker down we're going to do the bare minimum we're going to protect our people we're going to protect our business right let's let's be really safe absolutely understand that right absolutely we were under threat we wanted to protect the tribe i get it then you sort of had a moment at the start of this year which i think we're gradually coming out of where you had people saying um we want to do something we want to talk to our people we want to make our people feel good we want to move our business forward we want to change our strategy change our direction and i go that's great because now's the time to do it you know everybody's pivoting now's the time to do it and you had this feeling of people going well we we really want to do it but we just can't really decide and it's a little bit like that we're not sure what's right or what's not right i'll give you a personal example i remember when uh the football season started my son and i got to go to watch our team every week every other week the first game back in the stadium as happy as we were to be there i remember he's 15 i remember us both saying to each other is this right should we be in here this this doesn't i'm not sure this is right that we should be in here with thousands of people this is not good so there now that's changed but I think there's a mindset of we're unsure as to what the right decision is. Therefore, what can we do? Have another meeting. Let's have another meeting because the next time we'll definitely solve it. What happens? On and on, and on, and on and on we go. Right. So that is exactly what is happening. We want to make the right decision. We just don't feel that we can make any sort of decision at the moment. But I do believe, Geraint, to your question, I do think it's getting much, much better. But I think we've got a little bit of a way to go just yet before we can start being a little bit more definite. Indecisiveness, I guess. And we feel it. Uncertainty. We hate it. And, yeah, and we've, and we've felt it from other people that guest speakers when they have um, a process that they need to follow internally. Yeah. And then because we're usually the end user, you're mm. kind of like, come on, let's get it yeah. started. But there is so much indecisiveness. And I guess yeah. this is where hybrid working probably comes Same short, thing. short because you can't just knock on someone's door and say, no. Hiya, oh, yeah, can you just sign off on this? Am I all right to organize that or have that support or pay? Same for thing. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what? It, 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 this is going to sound a bit bizarre considering everything that we've spoken about so far. The actual thing of looking too far into the future sometimes doesn't help, right? Sometimes it is a, a thing to go, we're going to make that decision because that's right for us now. We can change that decision. We can pivot that decision. It's like what we said about hybrid working. Six months' time, whatever we decide now, six months' time, it's, it's, it won't apply. Yeah. So it's about being a bit agile with it, I think. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you, Geraint, for putting that question. Yeah, killer anyone question. Else, anyone else got any questions that they'd like to put to Pete? Or any yep. um, opinions or anything like that? I have a bit of an observation um, about the just the just to be together meetings, Pete, that you mm. mentioned. Um, I think uh, throughout the pandemic, I've worked with Raquel very closely because, you know, we used to work in the same same branch not anymore. Um, but the amount of meetings that we had throughout the pandemic just to be together and just to 
so I'll see each other and support each other and the amount of ideas and projects that um, came out of these uh, these meetings is, is incredible um, but also apart from aside aside from that they also made us feel um, I think maybe a little bit safer um, and gave us both a bit of reassurance as well um, and I didn't really think about it until until now but it's certainly you know it was the case when we when we used to have um meetings just to just to be together more than anything else um so yeah just a just a quick observation for me do you know what do you know what bart it, this is another thing and thank god we are we are getting somewhere with this i think at the moment it is all right you know it is okay to say we're gonna have a meeting just to be together just to hang out hmm. just to check that everybody's okay right just we're just going to do that for half an hour right we don't really want to talk about work we just want to make sure everybody's okay now back to the uh, introvert thing if you're thinking that sounds like my idea of a cold day in hell right that's all right then you just say listen kind of isn't for me but that individual doesn't get left out in the cold that individual is spoken to and contacted but the reason that that presumably worked between the two of you, I'm sure you'll both tell me, is because you kind of went into it with the same agenda, even if there wasn't an agenda. Yeah. So the purpose Without was clear. It either. We didn't, it was just kind of like, a, it's one of them things that happen in films when you just look at each other and you think, that's where we're going. And this is a beautiful <laughs> moment, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're witnessing here. Thank God we're recording this. It's a modern day love story, but oh, <laughs> absolutely. Get out of here. But do you know what? We, we It worked and, and me and Bart, it, we came closer and it was fantastic. Um, and I think if we can develop on that and we can grow um, and repeat that in other areas, then hip hip hurrah, we're on to a winner, aren't we? Certainly are. Yeah, definitely. So any other questions or comments before we say our goodbyes? Oh, here we go. Geraint's on fire. Oh, and we've got one from Steve. So I'll do Steve's and then I'm going to do Geraint's back. Okay. So Steve's said, interesting points. And it's part of being an inclusive manager. Flexibility with your team. I agree. Yeah, yeah of course it is. Of course it is. And it's all, you know, inclusion you know listen it was a word that I, that you know we could have used probably should have used that that is absolutely what it is listen i'll tell you what it's like right this is then you're going to think oh god what where's he plucked this out of right it's like parenting that's what it's like it is that's how it should feel you are absolutely if you're a manager or you're a leader you genuinely are responsible for those people that are in your charge and yeah. that doesn't mean you have to make them happy all the time, but it does mean that you have to try and grow and develop them so that one day they might be able to become you, right? That yeah. that's what it's about. And if you if you if you think that like it isn't like that, that that's and by the way, it's as hard as parenting as well. It's as tough as parenting. Yeah, it is. And I think you hit the nail on the head, and, and Bart always says it. And like Steve even mentioning that, the fact that people notice it and steve has registered it's being inclusive isn't it Absolutely. and people overlook that a lot yeah. and it's about including your team and not just everyone has favorites it's human nature but it's about bringing people they do same i do same um, with two, <laughs> two smiling steve does um but it's definitely about bringing your team together and having life happens doesn't it Okay, that am I okay to have a favourite child? My yeah. mum and dad have no. one. <laughs> okay. I, d I definitely have. Okay, all right. But Steve, how just do you do some that some your... that you just like a little bit better than others. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Steve. Oh God, yeah. That's been an inclusive manager. That <laughs> <Yeah>. is Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean it, it's. I, I would just say I know that you read the points out. It's just really, really interesting to get some corroboration to choices that we've made and it's not just me with my team it's the team that have made as a collective as well that resonate with what you've been talking about today awesome so, that's brilliant yeah. to hear that man it's excellent good. and is it, steve is it a nice feeling to kind of because obviously people have been very isolated and it's a subject that people tend to shy away from so sitting in your position 
and you've done that with the team do you think there's probably a sense of oh, we nailed it really we had it right we tick some boxes and we've done the best out of what has been really quite a fraught 18 months two years isn't yeah because i mean we've had people that, that have joined my team in lockdown so that's been a real challenge we've had mm people leave as well for other choices but and I put in a session with each with them as a collective for 10 weeks thinking that's the life of the pandemic it'll be over and done with, mm. with yeah, within yeah. that and we're still going and yeah. people get a choice they, they can come in and join if they wish it's generally it's a non-work conversation to be quite honest that's that's the only barrier that there is to mm. entry and and you know the team they just accept people are pretty resilient to be quite honest and flexible mm. but sometimes they need an additional element of love and support and that doesn't just come from me it comes from some of the other members of the team junior up over as well as senior down over as well so oh so, man yeah. look i tell you you know listen all that stuff like leadership is 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 you know it's it's, it's who you are it's, it's not a title you know it's who you are it's not a rank you know, you can have, I know organizations where, you know, some of the most junior people show true leadership behaviors in that way. You know, that's what leadership is. It's a set of behaviors. Yeah, it is. And it comes back to culture. Thanks, Steve. And it's really good to hear someone that's actually nailed it and, and has understood it, saw a problem come in and, and did it. And, and to be fair, shout out to Bart, because Bart definitely did it with us. Um, now this is a this is a great question, and mm -hmm. um, any tips on building rapport for online meetings? Any things that you would do or you would advise against doing? So do's and don'ts. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I know that we said it at the start, and it's fine because people were kind of watching us chat. But if you're in a meeting, you've got to put your camera on, right? Don't. I even if you have been out the night before and you have had an absolutely massive one you've got to put your camera on you know i don't have bad hair days if you're having whatever put the camera on that's number one number two is actually use people's names when you are talking that the biggest problem is when people go so what does everybody think and then we sit there going oh god they're all they're all on mute and they're all oh no right actually say so does that work for you, Raquel? What, what, Bart, what, what, what do we think about that? Am I, am I like offbeat here, Bart? Or is this, you know, you've actually got to use people's names. And third one I'll give you, right? This is hard when you've got a lot of meetings in the diary. But before you go into meet, each meeting, rather than worrying about the stuff, rather than worrying about what you're going to talk about, so whether it is to create or decide or be together or whatever, decide who you need to be. Do you need to be decisive? Do you need to be a leader? Do you need to be empathetic? Do you need to be respectful? Before you go into that meeting, rather than the agenda, what's your actual agenda? Actually think about which version of you, you need to be in that meeting and look it, actually look it, you know, sit there and think I'm be I'm acting out a respectful version of me. I'm acting out a decisive version of me. The problem is that when we're not all together in a room, we can be unbelievably passive on these forums and it just makes us more aware of why we're there. Yeah, I love that. And, it, and do you know what? It's points that you probably don't realise because I think you, human beings, we build stuff up, don't we? Of course we do. And we think, oh, what's going to happen? Oh, God, Jen. What yeah. about if everyone's cameras on and you're the only one and we've all been there, yeah. I've been the only one where it's only been my mush that's on the on the, the screen and it's that embarrassment thing, I think, sometimes. But Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 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 it is. Without a shadow of a doubt. It's fear of looking foolish. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like me last week, Pete, with purple hair because I yeah, thought that was, on my that new was, that was quite a moment, yeah. <laughs> but it happens. Thank it you. Happened. Do we have any more um, questions or feedback? Any statements or anything that we want to make? I'm having one of those moments, aren't I, Pete, with everyone on mute? Um, <laughs> but I'm glad that you just did a pet talk about it. It's all fine. It's all right. It's um, all right. So, everyone, thank you so much to everybody that took the time out of their day to come and join us. It's been amazing. 
We've got a link in our group chat for those of you that aren't on our Use These Better. Now I'm going to do a shameless plug while I'm here. This has been recorded. The recordings are up for, um, they can be emailed out so you can rewatch them. If you want to share them between your teams or you've got anyone that you want to have a look at it, you can have a bit of a taster session um, looking at Pete and me talking and discussing topics. We've also got an incredible, um, thanks Isabel. We've also got an incredible lineup for graduates and apprentices. It's going to be a 101. It's going to be focused on the bid industry. We're going to be talking about names, terminology, what to expect. It's going to be a crash course of bid writing and bid terminologies as a general. So if you've got apprentices and graduates at your business and you're interested, the webinars are free. They're going to be running over the next couple of weeks. Get in touch with myself or Dave and we can get that sorted. But look out online. But thank you guys once again for joining us and hopefully we'll see you soon. See you later.